Hey, what's up, everyone? Justin from Make Supply here. Uh, today's video live from uh, global quarantine, as I'm sure the rest of you are as well. Uh, we will be making the infamous leather mid wallet. This template set is available as a free PDF download. Just follow the link in the description, in the video description below, where you can download it uh, in letter size paper or A4 size paper to print out and use at home. Also available as an acrylic template set and as a laser ready slash source file where you can easily tweak the dimensions and add details or do whatever you want with it going forward. Okay, so let's get started with inventory. Okay, let's get started with inventory for this mid wallet project. If you've never seen any of my videos before, I try to use tools that are you know, readily available at all the major leather craft stores or Amazon and stuff like that. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Okay, so first I would suggest printing out your PDF template set onto um, cardstock paper or something firm to use to trace against. It'll come out in, uh, I think, yeah, five pages and just put it off to the side for now. I'm going to come back to this next. Going to be using a metal cork back ruler, CS Osborne scratch all, number two X-Acto knife, and a um, wing divider for a marking stitching line. This uh, generic Amazon um, mall for punching stitching holes. The thread I'll be using is this uh, Tiger thread and it is size 0 0.80 millimeter. I'm going to be using these diamond stitching chisels. Uh, these are Saiwa brand, uh, five millimeter. So this is a six prong, two prong, and a one prong. Two John James needles. Um, just some thread nippers for cutting the thread at the end. A lighter for uh, burning the end of the thread. For adhesives, I'm gonna be using this barge cement and also this uh, little Elmer's uh, glue stick. I'll explain this later. Uh, I got a bunch of binder clips here for holding the pieces together while they're stitch, uh, while they're glue. And for edges, I will be using uh, both hand tools. So I will be using, you know, sandpaper. This is a 240 grit sandpaper. A uh, just a wood a wood slicker. Two size edge bevelers. This is a uh, Ron's Tools Montana edger. Uh, number two, and then just, I don't even remember what brand this is. Uh, some, I think it's a Saiwa one. It's the small, so I think it's like a number one. And then a skiving knife and a Dremel tool. This is a Dremel 8100 with a, a Coco Bolo burnishing bit as well as a sanding bit. Um, and also some gum trag for uh, burnishing the edges. You will also need, if you are going to be making the project with the zipper panel, you don't have to, you can just use the card slot, the card slot panel on both sides, but if you will be doing the, um, the zipper portion, you're gonna need a five inch zipper. That just means that the zipper from end to end is five inches. And you can either buy finished ones or you can just cut that length of the zipper tape your own self. Okay, and not pictured is a marble slab that I'll be using to punch through on. And this rotary tool for punching some holes. If I forgot anything as I move through the video, I will mention them. Again, all of this stuff will be listed in the blog post inventory section for this project. Okay, so now let's look at the template. 
Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the template set. As I mentioned in the introduction, it is available as a free PDF download for you to print out at home and uh, create with us today in this video. Uh, the template set will only be able to be printed. You can't open this in like a uh, software editing program. You can only print it out. It is available as in a letter size paper or A4 size paper. So when printing, I suggest to print this onto a cardstock, like a 110 pound cardstock or something thicker to use when you're tracing against the patterns. Uh, first page. Oh, and please print to 100% scale um, and turn off auto scaling. When you print it out, you can just double check by measuring a couple of the dimensions and it should read what it says on the piece. All right, so your PDF will print out in five pages. So the first page is the outside body panel with a uh, dotted border that denotes where the um, optional top collar is gonna go. Second page is the inside body panel with some more instruction on it that we will discuss as we're putting it together. The third page, which is the um, bottom back panel and the upper back panel, you're gonna need to cut out both of these. They're the same size, but we need uh, two versions of them. The zipper panel, if you are going to be making it with the zipper, you will need to cut out this piece. If you're not gonna be doing the zipper and you're just gonna double up on the card slots, you can ignore this page. And the fifth page, which is the optional top collar and the card slot and the T slot. Just remember when you're cutting out leather, you're gonna need two T slot pieces. Okay, so that's the PDF. And next is the acrylic. This is also available as an acrylic template set in our web store and on our Etsy page. It's all the same pieces that are here, but in a solid acrylic template set format. Makes it a lot easier to trace everything. And this one comes with two uh, pre-sized five inch zippers. These are YKK zippers, so you can get started right away. And last but not least, I don't have a printout, but it is available as a laser ready file slash source file. So I have a, and that's only available in our web store. So you can go to the section on our web store called laser ready files, where you will get the uh, Adobe Illustrator file an SVG, um, and I think like two other formats that have these uh, designs. If you wanna tweak the designs or um, use them to cut your own templates or cut them out of leather you can go ahead and grab that on our website. All right, now let's talk about the leather we're gonna use. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the leather that I'll be using for this project. And then what I suggest you should use for this project. Um, I'm going to be using, since I'm running low on multiple uh, different types, I'm going to be using this Wicked and Craig uh, Buck Brown Harness Leather as my outside panel and my top collar. Here's the design here. So my outside panel and my top collar, I'm gonna be using buck brown harness leather. This is three to four ounces thick. And then for the inside, I'm going to be using, so all the inside pieces here, I'm going to be using this two to three ounce, very thin, um, Wicked and Craig skirting leather. So it's very similar to the harness leather except it's unfinished, it's just dyed. And that's gonna be the inside. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm very low on this buck brown leather and I don't wanna use all of it on this project at the moment. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. And what I did for this finished one already, this is all Wicked and Craig uh, two to three ounce natural veg tan, every piece. And with this one, I did a lining of natural veg tan. I'm not gonna do a lining on this one, okay? So traditionally, if you look at these wallets, like the flathead wallets, 
you'll see that they're very, very thick, even thicker than this. They usually use like, like four to five ounce leather for almost every piece. And I think that's just a little bit too much. So if you really like the look of the, the, thicker, um, the thicker original style of this wallet, you can use, I would use a maybe four, five ounce outside shell, and then everything else I would use like three ounce. That way you'll get that effect, but it won't be completely uh, ridiculous to use every day. But like, like I mentioned with this one, I used two to three ounces and I did a bunch of layering. So this one's one layer, two layers, lining layers, so that's three, just as the outside part. And then the inside are three layers and two layers. That'll make more sense as we go along. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned here, I'm gonna be using a three to four ounce leather for the outside panel and the top collar. And then this two, two ounce, two and a half ounce um, skirting leather for all, the inside, for all the inside pieces. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so I just went ahead and cut that out. Pretty simple, you can put it off to the side. This one's uh, a little bit more in depth. Not really, but you just gotta pay attention to what you're doing here. So as you can see, we're gonna be cutting out the outside. And then we're gonna be cutting out these two parts that say cut out this section, which is just this top part here. And then cut out this little hole down at the bottom. Um, I think this is easiest if you cut out the outside first and then these two parts. So let's do that now. All right, so we just went ahead and cut that out. So now we're gonna cut out the um, top section here. So as you can see, these come to a point where they come to the, directly to this line where it says mark this line for cutting. You don't need to cut all the way down this line, okay? Just cut this like open area right here. Okay, so I went ahead and cut, cut out the top section there. Just going down to where the lines meet. And then again, down to the little circle hole down here. All right, so that's all the prep work we need to do for the second panel. Put it off to the side. Third, we're gonna be cutting out both of these pieces that are on the third page. Uh, you don't need to do anything about the inside yet, so just go ahead and cut the outsides. Okay, magic of editing. Uh, now we have both panels cut out. Put them off to the side. Fourth page, zipper panel. If you are doing the zipper panel, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and cut out the uh, outside and cut out this inside here that says cut out this section.
All right. Cut out the inside and the outside. Put it off to the side. Last page. Top collar and the card slots. If you are doing the top collar, you're going to go ahead and cut that out now. If you are concerned about how heavy your paper is using this for trace, this is very intricate. And it's very thin, so it's, it's very hard to hold down as a floppy piece of paper. I would suggest gluing it now to a piece of like cardboard or poster board and then cutting it out. That way it'll give you like a nice firm uh, template to use. Otherwise, just go ahead and cut it out. And there's your top collar piece. Put it off to the side. T-slot. You know the drill. All done. So now we have all of our template pieces cut out. Go ahead and clean up your workspace and get your leather. Okay, so I'm going to start with cutting out my outside panel and my top collar. Um, as you might see on the leather here already, <laughs> I accidentally traced it before I was filming, so oops. But basically all I did was trace around what is the outside body panel. Let's go ahead and do that. And then next, if you're doing the top collar, you're going to trace around that. Being that I have the acrylic version here to speed things up, I'm just going to use my acrylic template to do this step. You got to really make sure you hold this piece down because it's, it's thin and it wants to slide all over the place. And that's the case if it's paper or if it's uh, the acrylic. So you really, really got to hold it down in, in place. And then just slowly trace around. Where is my scratch off? There it is. OK. Let me um, turn this a little bit here. Okay, sorry if I was blocking the camera there. You really have to like move your fingers around to keep that, this, that template on the paper or on the leather there. See, so here are our two pieces. Now I'll just go ahead and cut them out and I'll do that real quick and then we'll come back and move on. All right, here's the outside panel cut and the top collar. And you can see how that just sets right on the top of there like that. All right, so now just keep going. Uh, you can move this stuff off to the side. Mm, I don't know where I'm going to put this over here. Just kind of 
I don't need this one anymore. Or this. Okay, so now we'll do inside body panel. All right, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna trace around the outside, obviously, and then you're gonna trace the inside part that you cut out, and then you're gonna trace the circle, and then with your scratch all, you're gonna be marking all of these, you don't need to mark all of these holes, but at least you wanna mark the four corners of the back panel attach pad, the four corners of the zipper panel attach pad, this middle line here, down the center, you just wanna mark through just all the way up to the top because we're gonna to trace it, uh, we're gonna use a ruler to cut this out later. And then on the sides, punch a hole, put a hole in where the punch round hole is, and then up that line, just like we have it marked here. And then over here, same thing, right through the, templ uh, right through the template, and then up the edge of that line that connects it to the cutout part here. And then we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm going to use the acrylic version, same thing. All right, so first I'm gonna do the inside cutout section. and make sure you're keeping good pressure on it. Okay, that's the middle. Circle at the bottom. Mark the holes up the straight line. Just like that. I'm going to mark the four corners of the attached panels. Four, one, two, three, four. The round hole, bottoms. Okay, so that's everything on the inside that we're going to need. If you forget, you can, we can always go back and place your template over top of the piece and mark through. It's just easier this way, doing it first. And now we're gonna wanna go ahead and trace around the outside. Again, sorry if I get in the way here. I can't really move my hand at the moment. Okay. Make sure you got everything nice and traced. And then you can move your template off. Cool. Probably hard to see on there, but it's scratched on. Okay, so next will be the zip panel. Uh, do I have enough space down here? It doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna put it over here. Make sure the, um, it doesn't technically matter, but um, the panel attachment holes are on the left side. And then with this one, you're gonna go ahead and mark your four attachment pad corners. 
just like that. And trace the inside, the zipper cut out. And then the outside. All right, and again, that was this piece here, the zipper. And you're gone, all right? Get you out of the way, get you out of the way, get you out of the way. Next, we're gonna do our panels. It doesn't matter which one you do, but I'm gonna do the one that has these, the, um, bottom back panel for the zipper. Actually, when you get this, it'll say zipper, pa zipper panel. So I'll have to edit that. So get your zipper panel. And then let's see, where can I put this? I'll put it over here. Just like that. So you're gonna go ahead and mark your four corners on your attach pad and trace the outside. I'm just going to use this acrylic version. Okay. That was our zipper attach panel. And now you're going to get your other one, which has the two um, T-slot markers, upper back panel. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to mark, pushing through the template into the leather, the bottom of these T-slots, and then trace around the outside. All right, now we have both of these done. And then finally, your card slots and your T slots. So, as I mentioned, you're gonna need two of these and one of these. And if you're just doing all card slots, you're gonna need double. So you're gonna need two more of these panels and then two more of these sets. I mean, tracing the T-slots, uh, card slots are pretty self-explanatory, so I'll edit this part out. All right, through the magic of editing, I went ahead and traced those on. So here's a T-slot here. I just turned it upside down to save space. T-slot here and a card slot here. Now we're ready to cut it out, so go ahead and move <clears throat> all of your templates out of the way. And we'll start with the and we'll start with the um, inside inside body panel. Um, I suggest cutting out the outside first and then cutting the inside pieces, the circle and the cutout area up top. It just makes it easier. It doesn't move around as much. Again, I'll try to keep this on camera here. I know it's hard to see because the leather is dark.
All right, there's the outside. So now I'm going to cut out the little hole at the bottom, the little circle. Actually, first I'll take, do this. Grab a ruler and we're going to connect our, line, our dots now to make the lines that are on the template. Okay, so like that line is down the middle there, we're going to trace our, whole, our, our little uh, markings to make that line. So go ahead and line up your ruler down to the, the holes you marked through. Right, straight and center. And then just scratch a line. Just like that. Just enough that you can see it. Okay. Same thing on the edges too. You know how we cut to there? And then the punch around hole down there, so we're gonna connect those lines to the hole. That's the first side. And the second side. Okay, so now you're going to want to go ahead and cut out the bottom circle. All right, cut out. Do not cut this line yet, whatever you do. This line that connects the circle to the top, do not cut this yet. And then for the cutout, you're going to start from your round hole marking here. So from here, you're going to cut this line, cut out the inside, and then to the other side. So it'll flap open. Okay, and there's our cutout. And as you can see, now it flaps open like that, and that's what we want. Cool. So that part is done. Again, do not cut this in half yet, or your project will, you'll be in for a world of pain going forward. All right, so this one I'm going to put off to the side. Zipper panel next. Oh yeah, I'm going to cut it out the outside first. So I'm going to do that real quick off camera. Okay, there's the outside. And cut the inside out. And there is your zipper panel. 
Done. All right, for the next two panels, these pieces. There's no inside parts to worry about, so I'm just going to cut them out real quick. We'll come back. Okay. Two panels cut out. Add them to the pile. All right, T-slots. So what I'm going to do with the T-slot is, uh, let me find the paper. So that's the, the borders that we you know we traced around it, so we have the borders. So for the left and the right side, I'm just going to leave a little bit of slack. So I'm not going to cut right against the line of the template, you know, the, the tracing. We'll use that for lining up. But I want to make sure it fits on the panel really nicely and snug. So leave a little bit of margin, a little bit of slack on the left and the right side. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Just I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut a, across the top down and then go out a little bit and out a little bit. Just on the left and the right sides though. Okay, so there's the first T-slot. And as you can see, I left a little bit of extra room on the left and the right sides. You don't need to do that, but I think it makes a nicer end result because then we'll just trim it down later. This is obnoxious. Same thing on the other T-slot. And last piece, bottom card slot. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna do something similar to this. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna trace across. I'm not gonna leave any extra slack on the sides. I'm gonna leave some on the bottom. So by doing that, I'm going to trace across and down, down, and just keep going, then trace the bottom, and then down. So it makes a square as opposed to cutting around the corners here, around the round corners. So just go straight, straight, straight. And then once we glue down this panel, then we'll trim to make that nice curve. So if you want to use the ruler for this part, it works pretty good. So I'm just going to line up on the left side. Bottom. Right side. and then do the top as normal. Again, you don't have to do it that way. I just think it makes it a nicer end product. And then you'll have something that looks like this, square. So you can see how these line up. 
like that, like that, and like that. Okay? So we have officially cut out everything. Let's move on. Okay. We're not even close to done, guys. Let's keep going. Um, I'm going to take all the inside pieces and put them off to the side for a moment. And I'm going to start with the outside panel and the top collar. If you're not doing the top collar, you can skip this whole part uh, entirely and just move on to the next video part. All right, so this is going to go on to here like this. And therefore, we need to bevel the inside edge and then trace our stitching line. So actually, let me do the stitching line first. I'm going to use my wing divider here, mark about an eighth of an inch, and just trace all the way around the piece on the inside. All right, just like that. Now, you're going to want to bevel that edge. All right, and you can do the other side if you want. Not necessary. And now if you're burnishing, you're going to want to burnish this. So I'm just going to go straight to the gum track. If you got any areas that are a little rough, you can just smooth them out with the sandpaper. Again, remember, we're only doing the inside, not the outside edge.
I'm gonna use my Dremel to do this quicker. You can use the hand one too. I probably will for a couple of these tighter areas that this won't fit. All right, that worked for the overwhelming majority of it, but a couple spots in there you can't reach with that size Dremel bit. Just gonna try to smooth out here. Okay, that's good enough for me. If you wanna do another round, make sure it's real nice, you can do that. All right, now we are going to attach the top collar to the outside. Just like that. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using this barge cement. You can use whatever you have there. And I'm just gonna scuff up some of this space here.
Make sure it's nice and aligned. Okay, oops, got a little bit of glue on my leather there. All right, do you have clips? If you have clips, go ahead and clip it up. I don't go crazy with the clips usually, just uh, certain points throughout the piece. Okay. Now you're going to go ahead and let that dry up. All right. Went ahead and let that dry for a little while. Take off the clips. So now we are going to mark our stitching line, uh, mark our holes with hand pressure. So you can do this however you want, really. You can start from the edge here, go all the way around to the other edge. But what I'm going to do is start from the very middle of the little point. Because I feel like Aesthetically, it'll look much nicer if it's perfectly pointed at the middle and then you go down to the ends. You don't have to do it that way, but that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is mark my scratch hole just where I think like right in the middle is. It's like that. And then I'm going to start walking with hand pressure. I'm going to use my two prong. Start from that hole and just walk along to the edge. There's the first side, same thing on the other side.
Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just punch these holes through. I'm going to do it over at my marble slab off camera, but I'm just going to do the same exact thing I did with that hand pressure. I'm just going to uh, take my mallet and smack it all through. All right, let's do that and come back. All right, went ahead and punched all those holes. See like that. It's back. So now I'm going to stitch this. Uh, like I do in all my videos, I don't stitch on camera. It just takes too long. Um, if you need help with saddle stitching, I have a saddle stitching video I did in like 2016 or something, or by now there's probably plenty of good saddle stitching videos on other channels. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start here. I'm going to back stitch twice, stitch all the way around to here and back stitch twice. And then uh, we'll come back. I hope I have enough daylight for this. Okay, went ahead and stitched the top collar on. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and trim it now. Cool. So for now, we are done with the outside panel. You can go ahead and place that off to the side. And next, we will start on the insides. Okay, so now we are going to start on the card slot panels. Go ahead and grab your card slot pieces. So your two T slots and your bottom card slot your top panel and your bottom panel. You put the bottom panel off to the side for a minute. So we're gonna prep these the same way you would do any card slot. Um, if, you're gonna, if you wanna finish the top edges, like um, bevel and burnish the top edges, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That's good enough. And then I'm going to get my gum trag.
Okay, that's good enough. So next, we're going to put our card slots down, stitch them onto the panel, only on the uh, left side though, just like that. Okay. And of course, I did a step without pushing record on the camera, so all I did was um, skive down the edges of these T-slots using my skiving knife. You're going to probably want to do that regardless, just so it reduces bulk on the, uh, when it's all stacked up on the panel there. Okay. So to, the way I like to get this on here nice and accurately is first do it, I stack them up without, you know, without any glue. I have the markings for the bottom of the T-slot there. Just kind of put them on there. Using my hands. And after I get to the bottom one, I make sure it's lined up at the bottom of the panel and everything's nice and snug. There's no gaps in between the T-slots. Just, just like that. Everything looks good. So then what I do is I just hold the top T-slot and I remove the other ones. And that should line up pretty close to where the marking is, but just in case you, know, you marked it in, a little off on your markings, then you have a good spot for this. So I'm just gonna leave that there and then grab my glue. So what I'll do is grab my scratch all, just right, uh, scratch that line a little stronger on there, and maybe under the here. Just want to make sure it's nice and accurate to where I want it. Put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the T-slot. You don't need a lot, we're just trying to get it to stick down while we stitch it. Put it back on there. And remember how we had overhang on the sides? You can see that they're overhanging the panel. And then what we're going to do is just trim that off later. Okay, so I'm going to let that glue uh, let that glue sit for a second. What I'm going to do is mark about an eighth of an inch stitch, stitch length there. And then I'm going to do just three holes in the middle. You don't need to stitch across the whole bottom. It's unnecessary. The cards aren't going to slide through. OK, so what I'm going to do is um, punch this hole stitch this little bottom, and then we'll come back. Okay, so that one is attached at the bottom there. I didn't glue the top yet. Same thing on the next one.
when I put this one on, I like to check uh, by using this, you know, stack this up where it's going to be located and make sure that you're, um, you're not too far off. Okay, that looks good. All right, now we are on to our last card slot. So for this one, you're gonna be putting glue on the sides and the bottom. Don't glue the top. Okay, so I uh, glued down the bottom card slot. So while that dries, I'm going to glue down the sides of the tabs now. Now I will clip it up.
And I'm going to let that dry for a minute. All right, so I let that dry for a couple minutes. Now we are going to trim everything up. Okay, so grab whatever you're cutting with. And what we're gonna do is trim off this excess T-slot to go flush with the outside. And then also around the rounded corners, the little corners there. There we go. So if, if you don't do such a good job with your trimming, it's okay, because we're gonna sand this to be nice and flush. So what I'm gonna do now is swap out my um, cocoa bolo bit for a sander bit. You can just use regular sandpaper too, it's no problem. And just lightly go over these edges to straighten everything up. Okay, so that is what our panel is looking like now. And now I'm going to move on to marking a, um, my margin, my stitching margin all the way around, and then stitching just one side. Because what's gonna happen is we're going to attach this like this, and then that's gonna be an open space for you to put card slots, like a hidden pocket. Okay. So although uh, we won't be stitching all the way around uh, this time, I'm going to mark with hand pressure uh, my holes all the way around. I'm going to start right past the, the corner here. It doesn't matter really where you start, but I'm just gonna start down here.
Okay, so I just went ahead and marked everything with hand pressure. Now you're going to go ahead and punch all the holes through. Um, I understand that we haven't attached the other panel yet, but that's okay. We're going to be pre-punching. We're only going to be stitching this side. And then once it's time, we will glue this down and then punch through the last layer to make the entire piece. Okay, so go ahead and punch all of your holes through. Okay, so I went ahead and punched through all of the holes. All right, so now it's time to stitch the left side and only the left side. You're gonna choose a point somewhere at the middle to top of the corner on the top and the bottom here to start and finish your stitching. So I'm gonna go, um, I think right here. So right in the center of the rounded corner, the hole that's right in the center of the rounded corner to the hole that's right in the center of the bottom rounded corner. Start here, stitch down to here and tie off. And then we'll come back. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched that just like this. You can see we started up in the corner here, ended down here, and now we have the left side of the stitching done. Next, we are going to, if you are beveling and burnishing, you're gonna bevel this edge from here to here and burnish it, and the same on one side of this back panel. It doesn't matter what side, it's, you know, it's um, reversible, so. All right, it's good enough for now. Awesome. So as you can see, and we talked about earlier, this will go like this. And then once this is together, we will stitch the rest of it down and then you have an open slot here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is move this off to the side and grab your zipper. All 
All right, so go ahead and grab your zipper, either the one that I provide or the one that you have. Um, if you aren't doing the zipper, you're just gonna repeat the previous step again with another full set of panels. Same thing, because then you'll have one for each side. Okay, but for everyone else who's doing the zipper, go ahead and grab your zipper. So to line this up correctly, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the, um, so you, I, even I have to make sure I do this right. Okay, so start with the, remember the four holes that we marked on the template? Let me see if I can find my, it has the zipper panel attach pad. You want those to be on the left for now. Because it's gonna flip over and attach and then go like this. So with the panel on your left, your zipper, we will put in like this. So zipper head down to the bottom, okay? So first we have to stitch our zipper into the, into the center piece here. So I am going to find my wing divider. I'm gonna mark the stitch line now because it's just easier than when the zipper's in there. Just did that. And then you wanna go ahead and do your um, hand pressure hole marking. So I like to start where, um, start and end where it won't be seen. So if this is on the left hand side, you're gonna be flipping over like this. So somewhere over in this corner back here is probably a good, good place to start. Just like that. All right, did hand pressure all the way around. So now I know where my holes will be. And now it's time to put your zipper in and um, attach it down. So I'm going to use the rubber cement. If you have um, seam tape, it's actually a lot cleaner to use, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use, and you don't need a lot, just a little bit to just attach the zipper in there and keep it flat. So again, make sure your attachment pad is on the left and that your zipper is head, uh, zipper head down. All right, that should be good enough. Again, I'm not really, I don't really care about the permanent bond on this part, I just want it to stay in place. All right, panel on the left, zipper head down, and then place it onto your zipper and make sure your zipper is nice and centered. Which 
which mine is not. So try again. That looks good. All right, so now I have my zipper inside of its zipper slot and I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then we'll come back. All right, so we let that dry for a minute. Now it's time to punch our holes. So when you're going around and punching your hole, just make sure that you don't hit the, the donut or your whatever zipper attachment you have or the metal over here. All right, all done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this up and that's what you need to do now. And we will come back. Okay, just finished stitching. And you want to go ahead and trim off the excess pair of scissors. The excess tape. Cool, so our zipper is inserted. So now this is where this project gets real. <laughs> and it's definitely gonna come up to some personal decisions you're gonna have to make with how you want to create this. Um, I'm gonna do it the way that I've had the most success with. I've, I've done a bunch of these, I've messed up a lot of them and um, 
I kept revising the way I put things together. But um, I'm going to do it the way that I think gives the best results. And I'll also tell you the other way that you can do it if you don't want to do it the way I'm doing it. OK? So basically, what we're going to have to do is attach the back panel here to this panel, stitch this down, and then this is going to get stitched to here. Same with this one. We're going to attach the, the back part of this here to the body. And then we're going to fold this over, glue it down, and stitch around. And then after that, we have to then stitch this whole entire panel to the outside panel, just like that. And now you can see how this is going to pose some problems with punching your holes and making sure your stitching looks good. OK. So for now, we're going to put the zipper panel away and the part slots. And we're going to turn our attention to these two. So the first thing we're going to have to do is, if you are burnishing, to burnish this inside edge here and the inside edge of this piece. And also, if you want to go even more, you can burnish the inside of this hole here. So let's do that. All right, so that's good enough for now. Next, we are going to want to, I like to draw my margin, my stitching margin, before I attach this. So I'm going to take my outside shell. If you need to clean up the edges by sanding just to straighten them up, you can do that now.
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my roughly eighth inch border. And for good measure, I'll do one on the inside piece. Okay. So now here's your big choice. I highly suggest, and what I'm gonna do in this video is pre-punch. So that is pre-punching all of the holes before stitching. So there's two ways you can do this. You can pre-punch straight through your outside panel first, and then try to line up the exact point and pre-punch all this and put them together. Or what I'm going to do which I found to be easier, is I'm going to lightly glue this outside panel to the inside panel, just like that, just so it holds down. I'm gonna punch all the holes through and then take it off and then complete the rest of the project. This to me has been the most foolproof way of getting this done. Otherwise, if you do it the traditional way, of doing all the inside panel and then wanting to attach this at the end, you have to deal with all of this stuff when you're stitching. It's doable, but it's a lot harder as you can see because there's a lot of things in the way. But if you want to do it that way, there's no problem, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of using the very strong cement, I'm gonna use the I'm just going to use this little Elmer's glue stick. You don't have to glue it at all, really. If you, any, any way that you can get this to stick down flat and stay there while you make your hole marks, it will work fine. But I found that this stuff works pretty good because <laughs> it holds it down, but then you can just pull it off real easy. Okay, I'm just gonna do one side and then very carefully place this and line it up.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip this up and let it sit for a minute, just lightly on the corners, I think. That way we'll give this glue <clears throat> just one minute or so to tack, and then we'll continue on. Let that sit for a minute. Take off all my clips. So now what you're going to do, you're going to want to do is grab <clears throat> your stitching wheel or your pricking irons, whatever you're doing. Pick a spot, like I always do. I always pick the back corner, and then do your hand pressure all the way around. Okay, so I went ahead and did my hand pressure markings. And then you're gonna go ahead and punch through. So always, you know, double check, make sure you have good alignment first.
All right. So I went along and punched, pre-punched all of my holes. So now I'm going to take it apart. There we go. So once it's time to then finish this at the end, we have a very simple process of just gluing this down for real and stitching all the way across. And all of our holes should be just as we want them. OK, so uh, obviously, like I, like I said again, don't use a very strong glue. Use like a very weak like Elmer's glue stick and just use a little bit. All right, so go ahead and grab your two panels. So remember how we have the back panel with the four hole markings there, or all the hole markings if that's what you decided to do. Now we have to turn this over, attach it down like here, and stitch it. This is what I'm going to do to do this. So I'm going to take those four corner holes, I'm going to punch through, just so I can see it on the other side. Just like that. And I'm going to use these as the edges of my stitching section. It doesn't have to be exactly this. Um, it could be smaller. It could be bigger. I wouldn't suggest doing it too much bigger, but I think this is a good size. OK, I can see them through here. So now I'll just kind of scratch a little straight line. Just like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is glue the panel down. So this takes a little bit of kind of just a guess, like a little bit of a finesse. So you can see where how it lines up. The edges of this panel should line up just about where the stitching line is. It's, it's, a, it's an eighth of an inch in on all sides, right? So you can use that to kind of just position it where it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is Take my scratch all and scuff up that inside panel there, that, that part of the inside attachment pad. And same on this part. Get my glue. Smear a little down. and let it dry. So now what you're going to do is make sure that your whatever edge you burnished earlier, that ends up on the left side, facing in, not facing out. OK? So you're going to flip and push this down flat and place this down. If you really want to make sure, you can stick the um, scratch-all into the hole, kind of lift it up and see if it's lining up with the hole markings on the inside of the panel there, just like that. But you should be able to just eyeball this roughly an eighth of an inch in on all sides. A little, it's, it's kind of forgiving how you put this on here. Okay, 
So now again, I'm gonna let that dry for a second and then we'll come back and stitch it down. All right, we let that dry for a second there. Now you wanna go ahead and get your stitching chisel and use the holes as your outer boundary and then the line that you scratched you know, as your, your stitching line. So I'm just gonna do something like this and then punch through, just like that. All right, there's our little rectangle stitching box area. Go ahead and stitch that down. Okay, so that is now stitched down. Back panel done. Now it's time to take your front panel and glue it down to the back panel. Don't forget, you're not gluing this inside edge here. So just, you know, from there to there and you're stitching, don't glue that area. Just the top and around the back. All right, now when you're putting your glue, you're gluing your panels in, I highly suggest putting something, just like a spare piece of paper, in between the panel and the bottom, uh, just so you don't smear glue on the inside of your uh, nice leather wallet. Beautiful. Go ahead and grab your clips and clip that sucker down.
All right, now let that glue dry. All right, I let that dry for a couple minutes. Take off your clips. And I'm sure you can guess what the next step is. You're gonna to have to punch your holes through the front, through the back, and then stitch it up. As you can see, there is an attachment, so you have to really be careful with this part. I highly suggest getting some scrap leather, thick pieces, nothing thin, and then placing it between the, I don't even know if I can fit two between here, at least one in between the edge of the panel and the back. You don't want to punch through and punch through onto this panel here, okay? But being that I'm going to start down here, okay, so this one's going to need, where's my single hole? The side in the middle is going to be the hardest part because it's, it's the closest to an attachment. So just take your time, get it through. All right, punched all of our holes through to the back and we did not damage the inside panel. Excellent, so go ahead and stitch it closed. So stitch from the end of that stitch line there all the way around to the other one. All right, finished up stitching. my clippers. Cool, so our card slot panel is just about done. Now we have to do the edges. So I highly suggest a, I mean, you can just use hand sandpaper, but I think by this point, you know, there should be like some glue on the edges and everything. And with three layers, uh, I like to use the Dremel just to get a nice, flush, clean edge.
Don't go over this side. On the bevel. All right, that's good enough for our purposes here. You get the idea, burnish your edges, make them look nice. Okay, so we are 
officially done the right side of the wallet. Next, we will clear up some space and get started on the zipper pouch. Zipper pouch time. All right, so line up your zipper pouch so the zipper head is at the top and the four marking marks for the attachment pad are on your right hand side. I'm gonna punch through. We're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other side. All right, so this isn't necessity at this moment, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, zipper at the top. So on the left-hand side here, I'm just gonna do my um, stitching margin. Cool. So now you're going to want to scuff up the attachment pad. Scuff up the other attachment pad. Grab your glue. Now, when you're placing this down, make sure that the zipper is at the top. If you do it like this, it's not gonna be good. All right, so the same way we did the other one, oops, you're gonna wanna go ahead and place it down. It's gonna have about a eighth of an inch margin on each side. Kind of line it up. Good, nice and straight. Yep, that looks good, nice and accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Come back and we will punch our holes. All right, let that dry. Now punch your holes.
Alrighty, go ahead and stitch that bad boy up. Okay, just went ahead and stitched that down. Moving along here. I did a very bad job of stitching there. That's okay, no one's gonna see it. Um, next step, as you can probably guess, will be to glue down the zipper pouch, just like that. Go ahead and grab your glue. All right, just like last time, I'm gonna take a piece of paper, put it behind just so I don't get some glue smush. All right, just like that. And go ahead and fold, fold that guy over. Okay, clip it up, let it dry. All right, glue it up, take off your clips. Grab your bricking iron and mark your stitching holes with hand pressure.
Cool. So again, when you're punching your holes all the way through, get some scrap and put it between your punching surface and your leather. All right, punched all of our holes. Go ahead and stitch that up. All right, just finished stitching. Zipper pouch almost done. Now it's time to, same as last time, do your sanding and your burnishing and then you'll be done.
Okay, good enough. All right, we are officially done. The inside panels. Now, what we're gonna do is grab our outside panel. And if you opted not to pre-punch the holes, obviously you're going to be gluing it in place and then going around everything and stitching, punching your holes, stitching, using the sewing machine, whatever works. But since we punched holes, pre-punched holes already, when we glue, we're gonna make sure that we line everything up nice and neatly. So let's do that. Oops, my fault, forgot to push record there. So all I did was put some glue around both edges and let it dry for a little bit. So now we're ready to put it together. All right, so I suggest having a couple um, stitching needles around. We're gonna use them to help with alignment if you pre-punched. So you wanna go ahead and put that into place. So you can use the needles to kind of just line up your holes. Once you get like the first row in place, it kind of just lines up automatically. All right, so now we're just gonna let that glue set for a little bit. 
and then it's time to come back and stitch it up. All right, so I let that sit for a minute. Take off your clips. Okay, so as you can imagine, um, this is a long stitching <laughs> thing you have to do here, but just like it, once you get around the sides here, it gets a little cumbersome to get your fingers in there, but just take your time. And the other parts are pretty easy because the panels move. So just go ahead and stitch all the way around and then come back. All right, that was a lot of stitching. All right, and I'm gonna trim this off here. There's our finished stitched, well, it's not finished, but our st stitched up wallet. Did pretty good along the bottom and the right hand side, but the left hand side, I did not do so good punching my holes. Did a lot better on this one. Okay, so before we get to the absolute worst part in all of leather crafting and doing the middle, we are going to finish our edges. So go ahead and sand bevel and burnish your edge.
All right, so I just went ahead and burnished all the way around. You get the idea. I'm uh, racing against my battery dying here, so I'd love to get a little bit further. All right, last step. And like I mentioned, absolutely <laughs> really annoying. Um, what we're gonna do is be, we're gonna be cutting this line down in the middle that we, work, uh, that we marked, marking some stitching holes, and then stitching them, as you can see here. Uh, if you have a curved needle, curved hand stitching needles, this is what it's used for, and it'll make your life a thousand times easier. But for everybody else, like I'll be doing here, using a straight needle, it really is a pain in the butt. But once you get it done, you're glad that you did it. So if you have time to buy some hand stitching needles that are curved, it'll really make this part a lot easier. Okay, so what you're gonna do is grab something that you can put under here, under that line in the middle, so that you don't cut through the back, okay? Take your knife and then cut that line right down the middle. Just like that. Now you can see how it goes wide open like that. Next, you're gonna take your uh, wing divider and mark a stitching groove on both sides. It's a little bit of a pain. You can put your thing back in there. Just like that. And on the other side, same thing. Now, you're gonna wanna mark, you're gonna mark your stitching holes. So since we can't mark them, we, we can't fold it together then punch through, we have to evenly mark pre-punch on both sides. So the easiest way is to overhang the last prong on the back and just walk it down. Okay, same thing on the other side. Just make sure that like, they line up parallel to each other. Okay. How easy that is to see on the camera. Now you're going to punch those holes through. So again, stack up some leather or a firm surface, something in there, so you're not punching through the back, and punch those holes. There we go. So now we have our lines, our stitching holes, and I kind of like to bend this a little bit just to make it a little bit easier. So I've done this a couple different ways and I haven't found the way that works the best. First, I tried, to, I tried gluing this down and kind of keeping it together and stitching it as normal. It's very hard to glue and the glue kind of falls off and gets everywhere. So I think this time I'm going to not glue it and I'm just gonna freeform <laughs> stitch it. So as you can see, you gotta kind of pull it forward and close it a little bit to make that go like that stitching. So 
once you get the first two stitches, it's not bad. Once you get down towards the middle, it gets really hard and you just gotta be patient. So let's try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do a little loop on the top here. So for the first hole, let's, let's get it going. <laughs> All right, first hole done. So don't be afraid to just kind of manhandle it and just like pinch this area here. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way, of course, as usual. Okay.
This is where it starts to get tough. All right, got two more left. Okay, got to the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop around the bottom like I did up here. It's probably hard to see. You don't have to do the loop around. I just, I just like the way it looks. So do a loop around and then back stitch.
All right, I think I'm done. It's backstitched twice. Now I'm going to trim. Ooh, man, that's a uh, not fun. So doing that without the glue is a lot easier. Um, the last time I did it on this one, I, I put some glue between, and uh, it, it worked, but it was sticky and kind of messy, and it doesn't really stay down good anyway. So okay, last step will be to sand and burnish the edge here. All right. Whew. And that will complete our wallet. So it's going to take a little bit to, uh, you know, break this thing in. It's going to want to stay open, obviously, because it's a bunch of thick pieces of leather <laughs> put together. But it will stay closed once you get it worked in. Got your zipper section, got your card slot section, and then your hidden card slot area, and then you got a giant space for cash. Okay, so here's the other one for that will conclude our mid wallet video. Finally, we're all done. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, thank you for watching.